Good morning, fans. Privateer FX. Coming at you 21 June. Sporty day yesterday. Bit of risk off. We haven't seen that in a while. Always fun risk off for traders. I probably made 80, 85 percent of my PL over the last 30 years on risk off days. Yesterday was no different. I had a good day. Um, it's weird to think about it. If you think about it statistically, 80% of the days, just throwing out some random statistics, but the majority of the days in the, in the, F, in the markets are risk on. Um, and so when you realize that you make most of your money on the risk off days, what does that tell you? Well, it tells you, you should probably trade less. Um, and it tells you... Yeah, you should be patient and try and trade less. Uh, that's what it tells you. Anyway, um, good day yesterday for us. Let's just see what happens today. We got Paul at four o'clock. Here's gold. Um, we bought some of this at thirty-four yesterday. Wore a little bit of pain. Thing went down to twenty twenty-nine sixty-six. We are not in love with this at all. Uh, this looks like she wants to. Um, snatch and grab some stops below this 1925 area so we're going to keep this super tight um yeah in fact we're just gonna we're just gonna have a stop break even now if this thing floats higher great that one it was a lucky little trade but powell i think is going to try and strike a hawkish tone here um so Probably the day that this thing will probe stops below uh, 1925. There's there's some clear air down there. Excuse me, all the way to 1900. So uh, don't fall in love with your gold longs. Um, keep it tight, and then let's just see what happens uh, when they when these stops get clicked out. We saw last week when they got clicked, this thing roared higher. Um, but it wasn't, it didn't really do the wipeout that we thought it would do last week. You know, it kind of went five bucks through that 30 level. Um, anyway, gold, keep an eye on it. going to be an interesting day. Powell's four o'clock uh, Swiss time, so not a lot to do before then. Let's look at dollar yen. Almost had the old, uh, I guess we did have a bearish engulfing. Where did we close? We closed at. 44.9 how you like them apples 44.1 was the day before as low so not quite a bearish engulfing on that candle but the body of the candle did not uh, engulf but head to tail made a higher high made a lower low um, that's normally pretty bearish What's the trade here for Powell? I think the trade here is 142.25 stop entry, right? If he's if he's massively um, hawkish. As far as selling it, if you're if you're short, you're in the middle of nowhere here at 70. Where are you going to leave your stop? You're going to leave a 50 pointer. I don't know. Like this could go anywhere, right? If he's hawkish, there's definitely going to be stops above 142 and a quarter. Um, if he's dovish, I guess this thing could could start easing lower. Tens are at three seven four, which is a bit of, bit of a surprise. They really took a digger yesterday. Talk about bearish engulfing. This does not make a ton of sense to me, except for the fact that the market is massively long yield. They are short the future. This is why this thing keeps going up, I guess. I know a lot of you will say, well, you know, the bond market's like forecasting recession or blah, 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 blah. I think that's horseshit. Um, I think that the market is just wildly short tens, and you can see that in the data. And so this thing just can't get out of its way. Um, yeah, that's interesting. That is bearish engulfing. 
Uh, I don't think tens trade candlestick. You can't really use tens candlesticks on the ten year um, ten year bonds. Don't really work super well. So, um, but interesting three seven four. But keep an eye on that thing. If this thing floats back above three eighty, um, that dollar yen top side is at risk. Let's look at dollar China. We never trade this, or we haven't traded in a while. Last time we traded this was here. Six eighty. Forget when that was. I guess it was probably March. Um, obviously, China is cutting. The U.S. is allegedly hawkish and raising. Uh, although I think we're close to the terminal rate in the U.S. Uh, 740 is the, is the high of note. There's nothing really to do here at 720. I'm just bringing it up because I guess basically just to pour some salt in the, in the wound because we missed kind of an easy trade here, I think. Uh, I mean, there are no really easy trades, but world's tightening. China's easing. Uh, dollar China has to go up. But uh, anyway... Moving on, let's uh, have a look at dollar CAD. That was a pain in the ass yesterday. Did not work out well at all. We tried to buy through 40 yesterday. Really, um, I wouldn't say it's unpleasant, right? But like, really struggled. Like dollar CAD is heavy. I don't know why, because gold was getting smoked. I mean, uh, oil was getting smoked. It was risk off. We were short CAD yen. Um, got up to 70. Um, but then, of course, you know, we just got plucked out uh, back at 40 on the way back down. Um, what did we learn here? We learned that dollar CAD is offered. Like, I thought maybe this 40 level would work because the market was short dollar CAD. But I don't think the market's short dollar CAD at all. Uh, I think dollar CAD is offered. Who knows why or what, but that's what we learned yesterday. Um, I'm not saying hit the 3211s, but selling high ones in dollar CAD uh, makes sense if that's your proclivity. Let's go to dollar rand. This is where we got paid yesterday. Um, bought this down at 15. Sold it up at 40. Uh, the high was uh, 46. Matching these highs over here. If we continue risk off, this is still cheap. Um, if you're one of these people who wants to do a multi-day trendy type trade, probably stick a bit in down at 35. With the acknowledgement, this thing could easily trade down to 25. Um, just because it's dollar rand, right? The shit's volatile. Um, but if you look at it on the dailies, that's a turn day, right? It's a big bullish day after a 10% down move. Anytime the RAND appreciates 10%, um, you kind of want to question what the hell is going on because, you know, dollar RAND's on its way to 50. Um, sorry, South Africa. It just is what it is. Um, worked out yesterday. Uh, and this is obviously, those of you who have been listening for years know, my bias is always to be short rand when I can. Um, kind of like Turkish Lira, although not as bad, not as poorly run as Turkey. But, and also better liquidity and a better market to trade than, than the Lira. Anyway, very, very bullish day, dollar rand. You probably pick some of this up cheap. Uh, you, we all know where your stops kind of need to be below 1810. Um, or square again, looking at this with some fresh eyes today. Euro Swiss just keeps inching higher. Um, Thursday SNB. I don't know, could they like, could they have a dovish raise? It which seems very odd to me that the Swiss franc is getting, um, sold going into, um, the SNB, maybe it's priced in, but also like this market is effectively rigged. Um, I would say in not 
not in any criminal way, but just the insiders here in Switzerland just fucking put this thing where they where they want it. And it looks like they want it higher still. Um, just kind of sad that we didn't profit on this as we uh, were talking about strong hands at 96.75. But is what it is. Uh, still looks bid. Uh, Euro Swiss. Not much else to say here. We got so many hours. What time is it? Six in London. But nine hours until Powell. So let's just see where this stuff floats around. We're long a little bit of gold, but not much conviction in that. Stops are stops are at break even. And then we're just going to see where things are going into four o'clock and see what uh, see what Jay has to say. Patient morning today, um, like many days in trading, patience is the key. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Ciao.